And I ended up getting off all the dating apps. This is when I lived in San Francisco. Now, I got off all the apps, I stopped going out, and I stopped partying, but I didn't want to die alone. So I started to look for other ways to meet women without actually leaving my house. Sounds kind of creepy. And uh, like I just hang out the window like, hey! <laughs> So I did some Googling, and there's a service called It's Just Lunch. I don't know if anyone's ever heard of this. I think it's just out of business at the moment, but a few years ago it was around. And, uh, and what they do is they'll set you up on blind dates. You get 12 a year, but you're not allowed to see your date. You just have to tell your preferences, and then your love agent will set you up for the date. Now, I'm ashamed to tell you how much I pay for this service, but... I did the calculations, like if you pay for Tinder Premium and then you go out for drinks and gas and food and all that stuff, it comes out to you know a few thousand bucks a year dating. And this service costs a few thousand bucks a year. <laughs> it costs $1,600. $1, and I put a 800 down, right? And uh, people are like, good looking guy like you. I know, good looking, intelligent, humble, just like me. And I still struggle with this stuff, right? So I put the 800 down, I go to see my love agent and uh, I tell her exactly what I'm looking for. I was like, you know, I want a woman who's a little bit shorter and smaller than me because women like guys who are taller and bigger than them so they feel nice and safe. And she's like, perfect, we have a very fit girl. We'll send her your way, it's gonna be amazing. And then what happens is you go to a restaurant and the restaurant's in on it. So you tell the restaurant you're there for it's just lunch and then they seat you with your guests, right? It's just awkward as hell. And <laughs> I walk into this restaurant called Il Fernayo in Palo Alto, California. And I'm like, I'm here, hi. Or it's just lunch, and they're like, oh, your date's here already, we'll send her over. And I kind of like lean in, you know, like, is she, is she cute? And they said, she's here, and we'll send her right over. <laughs> so I go to the bar, and, uh, and I'm just texting, you know, my friends, I was like, F my life, how did I get to this point? What am I doing? You know, this is terrible. I'm looking at all these other gorgeous people on dates. I'm like, oh, the fuck, fuck these people. I hate them. <laughs> and then I hear, and then I hear her come over. I hear a feel, a presence next to me. And I turn and I look. And she was about twice the size of me. She's a big girl. But it's okay. Because I rehearsed. On what, on what to say in the situation. And I said, hi, how's it going? She says, hello. Her name was Stacy. We sit down, I order the chicken. She orders a chicken. <laughs> a full chicken. And she eats the whole thing. She doesn't take a breath, says that's when I knew I liked her. Because <laughs> I go on dates with so many skinny girls. They'll get a kale salad, two croutons, three bites. They're like, I'm full of big leaves. But this bitch did not give a fuck. She was eating. <laughs> eating. Like it was her job. Was like, ah, ah. And she was hilarious. She's Brazilian. She had all this charisma and personality. And I never would have dated her if it wasn't for this damn service, you know, helping me get over myself. And I was like, I like this girl. I want this to continue further. And so I started making conversation. It's like, what do you do for a living? And she says she's a curved model. A curved model? I love how women can call themselves curvy. Men can't do that, you know? <laughs> I'm curvy. You're just a fat bastard, okay? <laughs> I can't be curvy as a guy. She's curvy. Brazilian, curvy, sexy. Mm. So I had a few plans set up just in case the date was going well. I had, you know, round two, step two on the date. And I told her, I never did this before on a date, but I was recommended that we go to a male strip show. Fifty Shades of Men, you could look it up, right? Yeah, they were in town touring, right? And so I go, and we show up to this place, she's all for it. She's like, I love this idea. And we get there, and my plan immediately backfires. <laughs> Because I've been to strip shows where there's women on stage, men in the audience, and the men are generally well-behaved. I went to a male strip show. With women in the audience, and you act like fucking savages. Completely unacceptable. And there was 700 women in this theater that used to be a church. And I walk in, 
and there's this dude on stage, it's a tall black dude, and his name is Shadow. And, uh, yeah, Shadow, his name is Shadow. <laughs> and, uh, and all these women are screaming with that yell. You know the yell, the only the yell that you hear when there's a naked man on stage. And it's a yell that seems to have evolved through thousands of generations. So that when other women hear the yell, they descend from the forests to see what's happening. That like, yeah, you know the effect. It's terrifying. I looked on stage, I'm like, what the fuck is happening? And then, you know, all I see is this dude just, just bouncing up and down with his dick out, just bouncing. Like when you hit pause on Super Mario Brothers, this is all he's doing. And he digs down and he's naked and he's good looking, so they're like, You're so talented! <laughs> and I was like, What the f did I bring her to? <laughs> so she's like, Let's go to the front. And I'm like, No. And she grabs me and I'm following behind her like a little kid. And she's a plus size girl, so she's just knocking bitches out the way and shit. <laughs> We get to the front, the guy's like, save a horse, ride a cowboy, you know that song? And then what happens is they, to make their money, they, the guy's gotta give the lap dances. So they sound a horn, and then 15 dudes just come down, start giving lap dances, including Shadow. And they all look like Marvel superhero characters and shit. I'm feeling all insecure. Stacy is her name, she goes to the VIP section. There's a rope there, she didn't give a she just walks over it. Sit down. <laughs> and it's just chaos, so the bouncers can't do anything and shit. And so she's like, come on. So I jump over there and she's like, I want Shadow. I was like, you want me to get him? She's like, yeah. <laughs> and he's mid lap dance, so I have to like walk up to this guy and he's trying to do his jock strap ass hanging out. I was like, hi, uh, Mr. Shadow. Hi, big fan of your work. Uh, when you're done, the girl I'm with, she wants to lap dance too. And he's like, that'll be $3. I was like, three? Dude, here's 10, get your life together. Come on, Shadow, let's go. Come on, Shadow. I drag Shadow over to Stacy. He starts dancing in front of her, right? And then he picks her up. She's like a 200 pounds, picks her up like this. And he just starts going in between her legs. And she's hilarious, mind you. So she grabs his hat and then she says, save a horse, ride a Negro. And I'm like, <laughs> filming like a proud parent, you know? Just, oh, that's my girl! Go, Stacey, have fun! So I'm like, if I don't get her out of here, I'm pretty sure she's gonna f*** Shadow, so... We drag her out of the place, and we get back to her apartment, and it's, it's on. What's about to happen? But she doesn't have a bed. She just moved in. She's got an Ikea bed. It's half put together. So while she's in the bathroom, I thought, I'm gonna put her bed together. She's, I wait till the water goes on, right? So I'm like, I'm trying to look at the directions, but it's like Kia, then what the f***? You know, just <laughs> left with a bunch of screws, you know, chuck them under there, put the mattress down. She doesn't even notice. She comes out, oh, beautiful. Red robe, matching red bra, <coughs> panties, red high heels, caramel skin, brown hair, blonde highlights, voluptuous, curvy. Oh. Mm. She's in the dirty talk. I'm not. <laughs> You ready to do this? And I'm like, yeah. You ever been with a big girl? No. She's like, you won't love it. I was like, okay. You know why? Everything feels like a titty. Stomach titty, half straight titty, half titty, neck titty, eyeball titty. I'm like, Nice. She's almost like fucking on a water bed. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. Right? So we start to go for it. She had a strapless bra, my favorite. So I go behind her, undo that clasp, and the bra went. <laughs> hit her, hit her cat. <laughs> Titties came out like airbags. 
Big ass nipples the size of compact discs. Not CDs, compact discs. I was in heaven. Mm, mm. We start doing that shit against the wall. I'm bringing my medium dick. Not every black guy lives up to that stereotype. And I'm hitting that shit. And she says, harder! So I put on my Nikes for more traction. That's what good sex looks like. And she hasn't come yet, so I thought, what would Shadow do? So I turn her around. I squat down. I grab her by the legs. I pick her up. And I put that bitch right back down. They just let her get on top instead. Because when women get on top, that's when they come. Only problem is, they don't give a fuck about the guy anymore. The man just becomes a human meat sled for her to ride. She doesn't give a fuck about your feelings or your emotions or how your day went or that Bitcoin drop 50% in value. She doesn't give a fuck. She's, she's in a different world. She's even surprised to see a human down there. Like, she's riding you and she's like, what the fuck are you doing here? Just get to a pillow, put it right in your face. You shut the fuck up. It's my time. Who runs the world? I do. You shut the fuck up. You don't care about us at all. And then you start flipping your hair around. And do you think that's sexy? Because from the bottom, it's terrifying. It's real scary. You don't know what you fucking look like. Like, your hair starts flipping around, and you just be like, and then it covers your face. And you think that's sexy. You ever see that movie, The Ring, okay? You remember that? You're just, you, this is you on top of it. It's real fucking scary. So she hasn't come yet. And I thought, all right, I'll go down on her. I don't really know what I'm doing, though, you know? Every vagina is different, you know? And then, you know, women, you don't give us any help at all. You just open up your legs, you're like, let's see what you got, buddy. And he's down there trying his hardest, like, and you're just up there like, can't wait to tell Karen about this one. The thing is, you go down a woman, I sort of know what I'm doing, but when they're about to come, she was. You only have a few seconds to get out of there when it happens. <laughs> so you feel the trembling beneath, and she was there, vibrating like a roller coaster, or like a laundry machine on the spin cycle. <laughs> and I knew it was coming, but I couldn't leave, because I wanted her, because if you leave too early, you might lose it. Then you have to start all over again. You'll be there for seven years. <laughs> so you gotta stay. And I stayed, knowing that I was putting my life in danger. And she came, and she clamped down like a bear trap. <laughs> and everything went dark. And I'm tapping like a mixed martial artist. She doesn't watch sports, so she doesn't know what the fuck that means. And she opens up her legs and like ejects me like a cassette tape. And I came to, like Tom Hanks is saving Private Ryan when he's on the beach, like. And she says, it's your turn. She's like, you're gonna come in three minutes. I was like, no one's ever given me a deadline before. <laughs> She's on top twerking and going crazy and shit. And then it happened. Just <laughs> Her bed broke. <laughs> we have a great show for you guys. Are you guys ready for your feature performer? Make some noise. Let's hear it.